Now, so far which we have discussed, you know, the question arises that is the trend management challenges in the new, near future. What are the different challenges are there? So, new opportunities for the study of the global talent management, uh, then the comparative study of the Europe and Asia of talent, critical talent management challenges in the near future and the examples Google's concept of the 20 percent time. Now, the new opportunities for the study of the global talent management. Then as the stars who will fill these positions, this view of the global talent management means the focusing on developing a global talent pool of people to fill the key positions are there. So, whatever the key positions are there that, uh, that uh, the talent pool has to uh, make the fill these positions which, which we have seen at the time of the analytics also as well as the creating a differentiated set of HRM practices, human resource management practices to support the talent and to support the talent there is there is a requirement of the different set of the HRM is there. It creates two new opportunities for the study of the global talent management. What are those uh, new uh, uh, two new opportunities are? First is a perspective on the impact of global talent management on the HR role that is both top down management control approach to moving talent around the firm and the bottom up self initiated cultural driven flow of talent through key positions. This I would like to um, explain. Now, when we are talking about the impact of the global talent management uh, uh, exactly um, what your top management wants, what is the leadership style and then the management controlled approach is there then definitely it will be moving to, to around the firm that is the yes uh, the, the, the positions are to be done like this and the bottom up that is a self initiated uh, how you are doing the self uh, work cultural driven flow of the talent through key positions are there. So, what type of the uh, cultural driven flow is there of the talented through the key positions. Uh, then if the cultural driven flow is there uh, through the key positions then that, that organization or that family right which is carrying the culture that will be sustainable for long time. Organizations where the culture is not uh, able to catch are the families those who are not able to carry that culture then that, uh, that will be subject to the situation. It is very difficult to say that they will be failure or they will be successful, but it will be subject to the situation because uh, there is uh, very difficult to say how they will respond and the family or the organization which is not uh, con having the consistent culture in a given situation how it will respond you never know right. So, now then an expansion of the territory that might legitimately be considered a part of a global talent management system. So, the, 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 uh, the territory that must be uh, as a global talent management system that has to be accepted uh, and uh, these marketing driven concerns are there. So, if the marketing driven concerns are there then uh, it will be more acceptable as market mapping and the employer branding is there. So, this is becoming a very very important that is the how you are considering into the marketing driven concern uh, if you are matching with the as I mentioned situation market means what a situation an organization's uh, context uh, with the external environmental factors uh, and then uh, the employer branding employer branding one session we have already taken in the previously that is how employer branding is uh, attracting the talent and that is to be seen. Now, this is a very interesting slide uh, which you will appreciate that is a comparative study of Europe and Asia of talent right. So, UK, Europe and Japan uh, this study has been done and that is the uh, it is the uh, talent is having the learning abilities right. So, therefore, uh, in, in this study it has been found it is the those uh, who are residing in UK right. Uh, they are having the faster learning abilities are there. Similarly, in the Europe also learning abilities are there. As far as the Japan is there, uh, the, the topmost they are also having the learning abilities of course, but the topmost has been found the loyalty and integrity with the organization. So, uh, this becomes uh, the very very important aspect uh, the, the Asian cultural aspect. Then the working independently uh, that they have been preferred, then there is a power of concentration. 
So, in the organization structure you will find there is a power of the concentration and the people are working with that culture and, and in the Japan also you will find there is a power of concentration is there. It, it is the uh, written communication skills uh, that, that has been found uh, more in, uh, in the, uh, uh, the uh, UK based employees, UK based organizations and the working independently. So, therefore, uh, here also uh, when we are talking about the working independently uh, there, here also you will find they, it is number third of that is the working independently is coming. In the third here you will find that is the adaptability. So, uh, here the uh, uh, first is the loyalty, uh, then the second one is becoming this power of concentration and third is becoming the adaptability is there. The fourth one uh, which is the uh, talent has preferred uh, uh, in UK and uh, uh, employees working in UK that, he, that is uh, working in a team right. While in the fourth in Europe it has been given the preference to the reach and communication skills are there. When we talk about in the Japan, then in the fourth one it is the getting personally involved, then that is becoming at the fourth uh, is there. The fifth one in the case of the UK, uh, the preference has been given working under pressure, right. Here the loyalty and integrity, while well, in the Japan loyalty and integrity was the first one, while here it is a loyalty and integrity in the UA, uh, Europe is that is the fifth one is there. So, that is the becoming the learning abilities are there. The sixth one in UK is the accuracy attention to detail. So, here it becomes very very important that is the uh, they, their preference is more uh, on the uh, accuracy that is whether there is a proper accuracy or not mm, while here it will be the field specific theoretical knowledge. If they are having the field specific theoretical knowledge, they will be uh, uh, pre Europe has preferred on the uh, sixth uh, uh, stage. Uh, and while uh, in the sixth stage, uh, the UK has employees have preferred accuracy attention to detail is there. Here it, it is the field specific theoretical knowledge has been given. So, Europe and Japan they have given this uh, the uh, this similar uh, priority uh, in the case of the field specific knowledge is there. Here the power of concentration is seventh in UK while the power of concentration is second in case of the Europe and Japan. The oral communication skills are that is the eighth one is there while in case of this uh, uh, the UK is concerned and they have not given that uh, uh, preference as such rather than they have given at the fourth stage the written communication skills uh, that have, have been preferred. The ninth is the problem solving ability in case of the employees of the UK uh, while in the case in the ninth it is the adaptability is there while in the case of the Japan that is the third one is there uh, and, and uh, the tenth one is given the uh, initiative uh, while in the case of uh, the Japan the eighth one is given the priority is the initiative is there. Here it is it is the tenth one is the initiative adaptability and tolerance right the tenth position they have given for these responses in UK. In the Europe the tenth is given the tolerance is there and uh, in case of the Japan working in a team is there. So, therefore, this comparative um, uh, the chart shows that is the what are the preferences um, of the employees in the different uh, uh, continents of the UK, Europe and Japan. So, on if we have that particular information then question arises what are the critical talent management challenges in the near future, the managing the talent. So, uh, uh, here uh, the talent shortage looms especially in Europe right and uh, we are seeing that is the like the India which is having the very young, uh, gen, young generation the age is higher in case of the Europe. Companies will want to assess their quantitative and qualitative needs for talent in light of their strategic and business requirements which is very common. But the important is this that is when we are talking about the talent analytics. So, then that will be the quantitative and qualitative needs. So, how will you identify? So, we will identify on the basis of uh, the this type of the traits. 
So, oh, somebody asks that is the what type of the traits are to be used uh, to identify and then we will talk about that is the uh, here the quantitative and qualitative needs are there. Some of the measures like it has been given in the quantity, so it can be quantity. Some of the measures we can use with the help of the case studies. So, we have done the number of the case studies and therefore, that is the qualitative uh, is analysis and on the basis of the qualitative analysis, uh, we can find out uh, the strategies for an organization. In a given the quantitative and qualitative situations, how the strategies are going to be formed. To fully exploit global labor pools of the highly skilled professionals are required and uh, as a result of which uh, we will find that is the uh, it, it is important that is the whatever the uh, global labor pool is there you are you are hiring the highly skilled professionals are encouraged. In the attracting and retaining the talent demands that is the how you are going to attract and retain the talent demands are there uh, and uh, uh, it depends on the areas where that where they will go. Uh, uh, maybe into the some nature of industries, maybe into the business markets, maybe into the global practices. So, therefore, accordingly the attracting and retaining talent demands will be there. Then managing the demographics, managing the loss of capacity and knowledge that is the how the you are going to make this loss of these capacity and knowledge accordingly the uh, uh, demographics will be managed. Uh, so, implementing a comprehensive system of the job families across the companies. Now, demographics means whenever we are talking about the demographics, the major, major demographics come of the aging age. Right, And uh, when we are talking about the Asian countries like India and then we, we, we will talk about the gender also. That is uh, whether it is the male or female uh, which, uh, which employees are more in which organization and accordingly the rules regulations are to be from because that will bring the cultural aspect. So, therefore, in, in the demographics it is there. Third one is that is the economic status. what is the economic status is there. Uh, so, therefore, the age, gender, economic status, uh, uh, these are the normal trend, the demographic variables which, which uh, uh, we, we have to identify uh, about the deciding uh, the any the talent management strategies uh, in any organization. So, uh, uh, in the job families across the companies right what are the job families are there managing the aging of the workforce, productivity, hmm, the ability of the workforce to work in the shift environments. So, when you are the aging workforce is there then workforce to work in the shift environments it, it will be difficult rather than it will be the general shift which will be comfortable if your aging workforce is there. If your uh, workforce is the young workforce, the new career systems that you, you have to manage and uh, therefore, uh, if young, young, young employees are there, then you know what they are looking for? They are looking for the career. So, that career systems are to be developed or adopted the shift models. Uh, so, uh, if young people are there, you can adopt to the shift models is there, but when there are the senior employees are there, then the workforce to work in shift environment that will be difficult. Now, third one is becoming a learning organization. Uh, with the period of uh, time as we are seeing there is lot of changes are going on. So, organization as a whole, so there is L and D department not only for the employees, that is the employees are learning the training and development, learning and development, but it is also important that is the employers are having the learning organization. Corporations must prepare their employees to cope with the complexities and accelerated speed of an increasingly global company. So, uh, that is the employees have to cope with the complexities whatever the complexities are there and the accelerated speed of increasing global economy is there. So, when we are talking about the global economy, now it, it, it is very important how you are coping with that situation. Because uh, the countries like India, those who are having the young countries, then definitely uh, they, they are making a very, very important role in the global economy. 
because they are they, they are going to contribute. So, the contribution is there by these organizations which are uh, having the young demographic variables are there. If the young demographic variables are there, then uh, def uh, that, that will solve uh, the problem of uh, the organizations where the new skills are to be learned. So, new skill development will be there in this, com in this type of the uh, global economic system. Companies will succeed or fail based on how well they link employee training to their business strategies. I always talk about that is uh, the goal, vision, mission of the organization is very, very important. So, what the organization wants that the debt is to be clear to the employee, but here every employee will have its own goal also. So, therefore, that matching of the uh, organizational goal to the individual goal always. So, um, that will employ training to their business strategies, business strategies is the organizational goal. And these organizational goals when you are connecting with the individual goal, then definitely they will be succeed. But it is plus, but when you are going to uh, have the cross, where it is not the addition rather than it is the uh, rejection, mm, it is rejection. So, therefore, in that clay, uh, clay case, they will be the fail. So, these uh, individuals training programs developing these in employees that is connected to, to the organization uh, that will decide about the success or failure of the organization. If individual goals are not matching, what will happen? employees will be leaving the organizations. If they are leaving the organization, then definitely that they will not be the organizational goals will not be achieved. So, it becomes very, very important in how you are connecting them. Companies will need to boost significantly the number of on the job development programs such as the job rotations. So, we know that is the, there are two types of program on the job training and of the job training is there. Some trainings are there very important for the conceptual training which will be the classroom training is there. But when you want to develop the actual practically implications then on the job training that will be very, very important that is how you are going to implement. The fourth factor is very important it is managing the work life balance. So, my one PhD scholar uh, has done work uh, on this particular topic that is uh, how to manage the work life balance and the boundaries between the private and work life blur. So, it is important that is organizations are taking care of work life balance. If employees are increasingly uh, selecting or rejecting the jobs because that, uh, that there is a work life balance or not. Uh, uh, now, Mm, uh, this balance has become very, very important. Earlier, it was only the work focus. The persons have to do the job only on the work focus, but now it, it is not like this. Now, the, the young generation, they are equally concerned with their families. Earlier, the early generations, they were sacrificing the family's uh, time uh, with the organizational time. But in the current situation, the young generations, they want to create their work life balance, otherwise there will be a lot of stress. So, need to offer the flexible work arrangements are there like the virtual working hours, work from home. Uh, however, in the corona time it was compulsory to work from home, but even if it is not compulsory and the employee can go to the workplace, but still that the, 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 they are customized uh, for the particular employee. So, particular employees is doing the job on the basis of that what he is uh, uh, deciding. So, suppose he wants to spend the second half more. So, uh, uh, and in the first half he wants to take care of the family, he will plan. And he will plan the working hours accordingly, but when, when, uh, they, when uh, the uh, uh, these uh, em, 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 employees, uh, when when they want to work in the forenoon and they are given the assignment in the afternoon, then definitely the work life balance will 
disturb because there is nobody to at home to take care because it is a nucleus family nowadays in India. So, there is nobody to take care of the kids. So, if there is any management of this type of the timings are there and if it fails on the what the talented employee will do, talented employee will prefer an organization which is having the customized flexible working hours right according to the employees consulting with the employee and then deciding the working hours. So, need to offer the flexible work arrangements are there required as there. Companies should enthusiastically and visibly embrace programs that advance corporate social responsibility. Uh, so, nowadays it, it is a legally it has been made the compulsory that is the organization should follow the CSR corporate social responsibility, but uh, uh, I personally feel that is making the comp compulsion to the business uh, organizations to do the CSR um, it is a very unfortunate situation because when the corporates are having the they, their um, profits or the ROI return on a satisfactory ROI, then, then there is no legally compulsion, they by voluntarily they should share. Uh, many traditional organizations uh, um, they are doing this type of the activities um, which are the, the when they were that time when there was no compulsion there was nothing like a, a word even CSR, but they were fulfilling the social responsibilities. So, therefore, that is required. So, uh, it is better that is the when in the current time when you are talking about um, the um, managing your young, young force and managing work life balance, it is important that is you also talk about that is how the corporate social responsibility will be taken care of. Number 5 is the managing change and cultural transformation. This is the uh, uh, time like you see that the, the, the Levin's model is there which talk about managing uh, that is uh, earlier also I have talked about that pull and push. So, managing corporate and cultural change will become a critical task for HR, change management is becoming critical. However, I say um, that it, it depends on the so many other factors because every change is not negative there are positive changes also right. So, the simple example is that is the uh, changing from the middle age to the old age yeah negative changes there, but changing from the childhood to the uh, young age right from adolescent to the young age definitely uh, uh, that that as many people will be welcoming that. Now, the, there the socialization process is there and in the socialization process your habits are uh, and the hobbies that have been taken care then definitely the people will like to change, but if the habits and hobbies are not taken care socialization process is not taken care by the organization then they will not like the change. So, that the transfer for a simple example is transfer. If the transfer is a place uh, where the you are meeting your old colleagues then definitely you will like to get transfer, but if the transfer is at the unknown place and uncomfortable is there the people will reject the transfer that particular change. So, companies HR functions to develop the tools and methodologies this type of the tools and develop methodologies that aid line managers in communicating to employees and understanding that is the what will be the problem in the change, what why there will be the resistance to change, what factors uh, that we can consider to bring the change successfully. If we can bring the change successfully uh, with the help of the communication that is always better. But for that purpose you have to meet and meetings are to be done, you have to interact, you have to take the feelings of the people and then the co uh, uh, coordinate uh, with the corporate uh, office and then the corporate office and, and the expectations of the employees uh, that, that bridge is to be developed by the HR department. Uh, rigorously executing change management programs so that the initiatives are completed and succeeded. Dear friends, the change is unavoidable, change is required and if the change is required and change is to be done right uh, then it, 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 it is it has to be done change is required, but the creating that environment of comfort creating those training programs identifying the talent giving them the responsibilities making sure that is the change is not uh, creating any uh, negative impact uh, on any employee and th then definitely in that case change will be the positive change will be there. 
naming an executive to head uh, all corporate change management efforts and uh, normally uh, there will be the committee uh, in spite of uh, naming an executive uh, uh, I would like to say in India uh, what we are having there we are having the committees. In committees, there will be the representative of the employer, there will be the representative of the employees and therefore, when that, that committee will interact and the, the change they want to bring, they will see what are the issues are there and because of those issues, uh, they are not, um, there might be the resistance to change or there might be the uncomfort. It is not necessary that is uh, there will be the threat of resistance rather than uh, that is the what uncomfort we will create to the employees those who are the part of the change. And in that case if uh, you are bringing that particular employees those changes then you will be successful. The research showed that the last of these uh, four actions will grow dramatically with the number of change management managers expected to rise by the nearly 200 percent uh, among the responding companies are there. So, it has been seen uh, because uh, now, now you see who are your respondents it depends on that. If your respondents are young uh, uh, of course, this type of the changes they will that will be welcome and they will like to bring the changes for their growth and opportunities. If our uh, employees are the young one uh, the, uh, uh, that is uh, like they will like the change, but if the employees are the senior citizens uh, are close to the senior citizen employees are the working from the 30 years in the organization then bringing that change for them is in this type of the employees definitely it will be crucial. So, many times uh, it depends of the life cycle of the organization what type of the life cycle you are having. If your life cycle is positive, uh, positive in the sense young uh, embryonic and growth stage change will be welcomed right plant change will be welcome. Second, there are two types of changes, plant changes and unplanned changes, always prefer the plant changes, but uh, the suddenly some situation comes like the corona, natural calamities and all. So, then in that case it will be the unplanned changes, unplanned changes will definitely have the resistance and the, the culture of the organization that will create that is how it is to be done. Now, the last part, last part is the Google's concept of 20 percent time. What is the concept? The many organizations have changed their pay or benefits in order to attract better workers, hmm? but no one has changed every professional job in the company just so that the work itself is the primary attraction and attention tool. This is very important. Uh, there is the uh, wh uh, wh what is required that is wh whatever you want to bring the change, right? The change is into the job itself, and that that, that change in the job that is welcome and attracting to the talent, attracting and attention tool. That is, uh, I always talk about that is this generation is very much concerned with the job profile and what type of the nature of job is there. If they are comfortable with the job, they will do it. If they are not comfortable, then that will be problem. So, no one has changed the every professional job in the company just so that the work itself is the primary attraction and the retention tool is there rather than changing into the pay and benefits uh, and, and thinking like that the, yes now the employees will be happy and they will contribute it is not necessarily rather than that is the work is to be the 20 percent time is there. So, how the Google has done the key element of changing the work so that the work itself becomes a critical attraction and retention force and drivers of innovation motivation is what Google calls 20 percent work. The 20 percent time along with the expectations of the continuous and disruptive innovations has driven the company's phenomenal success in product and service innovation. So, therefore, in that case whenever the, we are talking about this 20 percent uh, uh, work time is there uh, uh, here uh, that is the, the employees right the diverse of the innovation and motivations the expectations of these continuous and disruptive innovations are there and if there is a continuous and disruptive innovations are there they have uh, has driven the company's phenomenal success in the product uh, and the service innovation is there so uh, those employees those who are following this 20 percent uh, time uh, of their own choice uh, um, with the expectations of continuous and disruptive innovation then they, they are becoming the they are bringing successfully bringing the new products and the service innovations are there. The Google's founders uh, the Larry Page and the Sergey Brin the HR director uh, that is Tracy Sylvian and the leadership team at Google have literally crafted every professional job and workplace element so that all employees are. So, job crafting 
job crafting there is a 20 percent time concept that is becoming very very important um, working on the interesting work and that is the, the in which they are interested. So, there are certain job and positions which are having the numerous activities, but out of those numerous activities related to the my personality I will prefer a particular job and that, that I would, would like to give for the 20 percent and the learning continuously and uh, some employees uh, as I mentioned that is this uh, young generation they are very fast to learn and therefore, they are learning continuously the technology constantly challenged to do more and th there is a challenging job. It is not monotonous, it is not routine, it, it is something is exciting, exciting, positive, challenging and they want to do, they want to dash and therefore, in that case there is a vibrancy, energy and the involvement and engagement feeling that they are the adding value and as a result of which they see the surrounding and they say yes, I did it. So, that particular perception of this uh, that is uh, I did it, I can, right, I want. So, therefore, that particular uh, interest, that motivation that is making the talented uh, employees to involve more and more into the organization place. Finally, a study done by the uh, FEDE, uh, a cross cultural empirical study is done which focuses on the ethical beliefs and behaviors among the French. Uh, Asians and German managers and compares this with previous studies of the US and Israeli managers using a similar questionnaire is there. Comparisons are made between what managers say they believe and what they do between managers and their peers attitudes and behaviors and between the perceived top management attitudes and the existence of company policy. Significant differences are found for both individual managers by nationality and for companies by nationality of parents in the area of organizational loyalty is there. The attitude towards accepting gifts and favors in exchange for the preferential treatment as a measure of the societal values is also found to show significant difference between the national groups. So, whether they are some people, some groups are accepting, some peoples are not. No significant difference are found for measures for the group loyalty, conflict between organizational and group loyalty and for conflicts between the self and the group organization. So, there is nothing much difference is there in the conflicts management. So, this is all about that is the how we are developing about the talent management issues. Uh, I hope that you will find the interesting studies in this session. Thank you.